Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be kind of an interesting one because I'm going to show you how to get iMessage on your Chromebook. Now, this is kind of a lengthy and involved process, so I'll have an index down in the description to jump you to the different sections of this. And some things that you will need to make this work. Number one, you'll need a Chromebook that uh, supports Android apps. And the second thing is you're going to need a Mac in order to do this. If you don't already have a Mac, you don't need to go out and buy a brand new one for this process. You can get an older one off of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree or something like that for probably under a hundred bucks that'll run this just fine. I'm gonna be doing it on a 2014 Mac Mini, but you can get something that's much older than that to run this process. Now we're gonna be doing this with a product called Blue Bubbles, and basically what this does is it has a server that runs on that Mac that acts as an interface between your iMessage and a database. So it updates that database and reads from that database in real time, and then you run the client on your Chromebook or Android phone or Windows or Linux or whatever, and it synchronizes with that both ways so you can send and receive iMessage messages on that client machine. Now, like I said, this is a little bit of a lengthy, complicated setup. It's not just, you know, install and go. It takes a little bit to set up, but we're gonna go through it step by step. If you have any questions along the way, leave comments down in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer them as much as I can. Also, if you leave questions that I can't answer, sometimes other people that are watching the video will have the answer and be able to answer that for you. So let's get a community going, and if you have questions or answers, please update the comment section. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump onto that Mac Mini and get everything set up on the server side. All right, so here we are on the desktop of the Mac Mini, and you might notice that I'm running Catalina. Now, the reason I'm running Catalina and not Big Sur is because there was changes in the API for Big Sur that block uh, blue bubbles from creating new messages. So if you're on a client device and you try to create a new conversation, you won't be able to if your server is running Big Sur. If you're running Catalina or Blow, you're good to go. So I just downloaded this to Catalina. Hopefully that's something that they'll find a workaround for in the near future, but that's the way it is as of the time of this video. Now, before we get into any of the Blue Bubbles configuration or anything, the first thing you need to do is set up the Mac with your account enough so that you can use messages. Now, basically you just have to have your messages account and uh, your contacts synced. You don't have to do your whole iCloud thing. You can come into preferences and go to messages and then just um, sign in here if you want, or you can connect it to iCloud, however you, much you want, but the minimum you need is your messages to show up in here. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Blue Bubbles configuration. So the first thing you wanna do is go out to the Blue Bubble site. I have it right here and I'll put a link down in the description. There's two areas we're gonna focus on. Uh, one is the install area. So this is just a set of installation steps that take you through getting this thing set up. And this is basically what I'm gonna be doing in this video. And then there's the downloads area. This is where we're gonna go first. There's the client uh, options, and we're gonna talk about those more in, you know, later in the video. And then there's the server. This is what we're gonna install on our Mac. So you wanna click and download that. It's a relatively quick download. I've already downloaded it onto my machine. I have it here. So I'm just gonna click on this DMG and open that up. Once it opens, we'll just drag the blue bubbles into the applications folder. It takes just a few seconds. And then we can close this down, hit our command space, type in blue bubbles. You can see I have it in there already. Give this a few seconds to start up. It's probably gonna ask us if we're sure we wanna open it. Yes, we are. Okay, so this is our setup screen for Blue Bubbles, and we'll get into this in just a few seconds. But the first thing we want to do is go into our system settings, and we're going to go to security and privacy, and then down to full disk access. We want to make sure that Blue Bubbles is checked. If it's not checked already, just click on the lock icon, put in your password, and then make sure that's checked, and then you can just close out of here. Now we need to set up some of this other stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in a password for this server. And just because I'm just doing a test here, I'm just gonna use the word password. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to use something a little more secure than that. 
Now you can click this to support uh, SMS for the desktop clients and the next things that we want to deal with are the FCM server and the google-services.json file. So we're going to go and set that stuff up now. If we go back to our browser, we need to go to consoles.firebase.google.com. Again, I'll have a link down in the description. You're going to log in with your Google account and just create a new project. We're going to call this Blue Bubbles. Make sure that uh, the Google Analytics for this project is off and then create project. Okay, our new app is created, so we can go ahead and click continue on that. Now we're in our project, we need to create a real-time database that these messages are gonna sync to. So we'll click here, create a database, pick our location, hit next, just leave that in lock mode and click enable. We'll let this finish. So now our real-time database is created. So we're gonna go into our project settings, our service account, and we're gonna generate a new private key for this project. And then we're just gonna save this project key locally. So now that bluebubbles.json file, if we minimize this and go into our downloads folder, we can just take this file and drag it right into our FCM server option in Bluebubble setup. So we're just gonna drop that in there. And the next thing we need to do is do the Google services.json file. So in order to generate that next file, we're gonna go back into our Firebase. We're gonna to go to our project settings and go to the general tab. And then we're gonna click on this little Android icon here. And then we're gonna generate our company name. So just put in something like com.yourname.bluebubbles. We're gonna click register app. And then we're gonna download this JSON file just like we did last time. And then we can go back into our Bluebubble setup into our downloads directory and drag that Google services.json into the spot where it asked for that file. Hit continue. And at this point, the server is all set up. If you're on a mobile device, if you're doing this on an Android device or something, you can just scan that QR code for other devices. You can type in that server address with that port. So now that the server is done, let's jump onto the client computer and finish that configuration there. So the server side's all set. Now we're gonna talk about the client side and we're here on our Chromebook to get this set up. It's super easy, just open up the Google Play Store do a search for blue bubbles and we're going to click on that and install it. Now I'll just give this a minute to install and then I'll come back and show you how to get connected. All right, so now we have it installed. Let's go ahead and launch blue bubbles. Now, when we're going through the setup, it may ask you for different permissions uh, to allow the software to work. Just go ahead and allow those. Let's go through the setup here. Now this is where it'll, um, we can either scan that QR code that you may have seen when we set up the server or manually enter it. Now, for some reason on a Chromebook, I've not been able to get it to recognize that QR code. So I'm just gonna manually put things in here. You might have better luck. So I'm just gonna pause this for a second because it's gonna take me a while to type this, uh, this long string in and then I'll come back. All right, so I got the URL typed in in that super secret password that we created and I'm gonna hit okay to get connected. So right now we are connected to that site that we created. And the way this works is our server is gonna communicate with that site in real time. And our client is also gonna communicate with that site real time. So it asks, acts as kind of a uh, in-between between our server and our client device. So this is just asking how many messages you wanna download initially. You can set this to whatever you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it the default 25. And you can see a little status there of what it's doing. It's receiving the messages from the different, you know, the various phone numbers and chats and group messages, all that kind of stuff. So we'll just let this go. And then uh, again, I'll come back when this is all complete.
And there you go. We are all set up to send and receive iMessages to and from our Chromebook. Now, I know you can't see it because I have the screen blurred out, but on my initial setup, it's just the phone numbers that are showing, and that's only because I don't have my contacts set up on this Chromebook yet. Once I get those contacts set up, those uh, numbers will be looked up in the address book and then you know show up as a contact name, just like it would in iMessage on a Apple device. So now I'm going to send and receive a few messages just so you can see that this is working. And there you go. As you can see, we can send and receive iMessages on our Chromebook using Bluebubbles with our Mac Mini running in the background. Now that Mac Mini needs to be running all the time and you need to have Bluebubbles running on there all the time as well. And like I said, you don't need an expensive Mac for this. You can use a really cheap one that you get on Craigslist or something like that. It's possible you may be able to do this in a VM. That's not something I've tried, but it's a possibility. So give it a try and let me know how that goes. If you found this video useful, please hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already and you like videos like this. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.